That's abundantly clear. Now, there's a robust and very large literature in animal models. What I mean by that are field studies and laboratory studies in primates of different kinds, such as macaque monkeys or bonobos. Um, people have looked at these sorts of things, believe it or not, in ducks, in laboratory mice, in different types of birds, et cetera. And if you look at that literature, you can essentially find biological examples in the animal kingdom for just about any behavior that you can easily map to human behavior. So for instance, uh, there's a species of animal called the prairie vole in one portion of the United States. This prairie vole species is monogamous. They only mate with one other prairie vole, only raise young with one other prairie vole for their entire life. And in another region of the United States, the same species of animal, the prairie vole, will mate with many individuals. They're non-monogamous. And the major difference, at least as far as we know, between the prairie voles in one location and another location is the levels of a molecule called vasopressin in the brain and body. Vasopressin is present in humans. It has numerous biological roles. It's responsible, for instance, for controlling the amount of urine that you excrete, the amount of water that you retain, and for sexual desire, as well as um, mate seeking. Levels of vasopressin in prairie voles are strongly determinant of whether or not a prairie vole is going to be monogamous or non-monogamous.